Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, I'm Jennifer Van Riet from Silver 17 Consulting. We, with me is my collaborator at Touchbase. You can find us on Facebook, uh, Jane Moores. And today we are talking with Alman Lambrecht. I am so excited to introduce Alman to you. He was supposed to be our next guest at our masterclass at the Workshop 17. We believe that he needs absolutely to have this uh, space to speak to you all. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Jane. Jane? Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. I really appreciate um, your collaboration in organizing this. And I know it actually started in January this year where we had an in-person workshop at the waterfront, which uh, many of us are craving at this stage since we're all <laughs> locked down in our homes. So we look with envy at those kind of scenarios. But here we are still making the most of it. And Jennifer and I have decided that we really wanted to collaborate to be able to support our clients and our candidates and our friends during this pandemic. So Jennifer is normally spending her time sourcing people. I normally spend my time training and coaching people in the recruitment industry, internal and external recruiters. But for now, we're really looking at topics that we can explore to help support those of you who are at home, who are working and trying to continue to work and build yourselves and learn in our new normal. So welcome, Elman. We're really excited to have you with us today. I know you were actually there in the water front with us in January this year. So all of us are here is a little longer at this stage because none of us have made it to a hairdresser at this stage. But here we are full of heart and spirit. And I know that you've spent about 15 years in the HR industry um, and also in, in human resources and also in talent attraction and in talent acquisition. So you have a lot of experience to offer. And you have started not just one, but two HR tech companies, being Kogo People Analytics and Three Degrees Tech. So welcome, welcome. And please, could you start off by just telling us a little bit more about what each of these companies do? What is your focus in each of them? Um, yes, uh, Jennifer and Jane, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, but can I share to, to all the delegates that's here, I've never seen two people as professional as Jane and Jennifer when it comes to webinars. My word, they are on top of it. And thank you so much for arranging all of this. Um, everybody that's live now and people that's going to watch later on, um, I've been following your other webinars and it's amazing work that you do. So I want to thank you for, for awesome work that you're doing um, for the community and, and everybody out there. Um, I'm very happy to be here today um, because I've been quite busy over the past couple of weeks because of the technology that we have developed um, and as we speak today during our conversation and I'm showing a couple of demos, I'm sure people would understand the reason why this has become so extremely important under the current circumstances. But quickly, the, the, the two companies that I founded, Kogo People Analytics, they we specialize in developing artificial intelligence solutions for specifically for human resources. Um, so these are the solutions regarding process optimization. We, we've got HR virtual assistants, so you can call them HR chatbots that, that, that assist um, HR in various ways. But then our main flagship product is around HR or, or people analytics, where we develop um, predictive and prescriptive analytic models where people can predict, for example, would leave your company next. Um, so it's a tuition model and um, learning and development models, um, even um, and, and timekeeping or, or attendance models, we can predict how, what large part of your workforce might be absent tomorrow due to various absenteeism matters. Um, so that's, uh, that's Koga People Analytics. On Two Degrees Tech, they we specialize more in con converting HR communication or HR processes in highly engaging virtual environments. That's a lot of the things that we're going to talk about today. Um, so it, it, it takes whatever HR wants to communicate, whether it's to a candidate in the recruitment environment or to an employee in the employee life cycle. We take that process, take the, take the messages and create game-based environments. It, it's different to gamification, but a game-based. So we create some games, it's online games, 
whether it's virtual, whether you use VR or whether you use mobile games, but we then convert the processes into that and that's how we can, can converse and engage with, with employees. So that's that's the, the, the two mm -hmm. main main companies. Thanks, Sean. Okay, excellent. Well, I know that Jennifer and I both love what you do. We are we are super great fans of it. And I've had the privilege of seeing the fun side of that when we were doing some training last year and also pulling it into our conference at the beginning of this year. So I love that gamification and that virtual world. I think it's so exciting. But how did you come to see the need for for developing these, you know, these companies and, and for what they offer to HR and, and talent acquisition people? Yes, okay, with your, with your permission, I'm going to focus more on the 3 degrees tech side, so the, the, the whole engaging part, and, and where the identification comes in, I come from HR, so I've spent 15 years in HR prior to, to, to this, started off as an HR journalist, so there we did everything from um, disciplinary hearings to recruitment, to employee engagement, to payroll and everything, did that for a couple of years before moving into more talent acquisition specialists positions, which is more recruitment positions. But throughout that, throughout my career, very often I got, I got frustrated of my own ability to communicate with my employees because from an HR point of view, there's a lot of messages that we need to put across. Let's say there's a new policy. You need to not just communicate that policy, but educate people regarding that policy. Um, support people, speak to you, you need to engage with them back. Um, if there's change management processes or you want to engage more candidates, in other words, build your candidate pool, um, so you communicate via job portals or social media. But our ability to communicate sometimes was quite hampered. And, and the, I feel sometimes the reason for that is we were, com we were using outdated communication tools. For example, mass email. So we would think we're going to create a, a new policy, let's say the policy about um, there's a COVID-19 policy. So is it, what is going to happen with your leave? So is this compulsory leave? Is it, is it, is it non-compulsory leave? What's going to happen? So we need to communicate it. So normally what does HR do? We send out a mass email, a bulk email. So if, if you're a large multinational, you send it out to all 10,000 people. So now you believe that 10,000 people are going to read that email, going to understand that email, and everybody's happy out there. Well, our marketing departments would tell you should you send a mass email, less than 10% of people at the end open up a mass email and your engagement with that email, let's say click, click on a link or something, is normally less than 1%. So what would happen if we take it in the HR context, we think we're communicating with 10,000 people, yet probably only 1,000 is going to open up that email and about 100 of people are actually going to click on a link. So it's a, it's a very outdated communication tool, but HR has been using that. Um, uh, in, in for, for a while. So I, I think the need came about that we need to understand that millennials today, they they engage with games, they engage with chat groups, not even just general chat, they, 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 they live in communities. So the rules regarding communication, the tools regarding communication has changed. Um, and what has happened now with, with the COVID-19 outbreak, our, our our limited ability to communicate with our employees is now even worsened. It's exaggerated because now not just are we struggling to communicate with them, but now everybody's from at home. So now we need to communicate with remote employees and we're still trying to use SMS or emails. So where the need came in is to find ways where we can communicate with, with our employees using tools that they like to engage with, but also engaging their, 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 their minds and their hearts by getting that, that emotional experience and engaging them with the tools that we use. So that is where the need came in, um, and that is why we've developed some tools to help HR in, in, in that, that type of way. Uh, I, see, I see Jane has gone, so maybe Jennifer, you, um, what, what, do you, what do you think about what we're saying? What is your, what is your experience in speaking with, with clients? Well, absolutely. I think that it is, especially in future, I love these environments of yours. And perhaps we can quickly touch on the entrepreneurship while we wait for Jane to come in, because that was something that we were going to cover a little bit later. But, you know, um, you are an entrepreneur in this space trying to scale up now. 
and we spoke about you coming in and um, uh, uh, hoping that that a VC will potentially see you and see the value in these things that you do. Can you tell me a little bit more about what you would do if you had all the money in the world to, to scale this up? Wow. Okay. Well, firstly, what I would do, I would smile more than what I tell <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll be happy. But I think um, uh, what funding does for any entrepreneur, so um, whether Jane for you or, or Jennifer for you, or I uh, know I'll say this on the call. If you're an entrepreneur, what, what funding does it help you to scale? Um, a lot of us do have products that's already adding value. Why we know it's adding value is because people are already paying us for it. Yeah. So the reason that people are already paying us for the product to deliver, meaning that we are adding value, but scalability, uh, that is what normally what, what 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 funding normally helps you and assist you with is to to take it not just to to your current network, but then especially South Africa and into Africa, um, but then necessarily on a, on a global level. What we have found, I've spoken with other tech entrepreneurs like Jonathan Koch, Talent Genie. Um, uh, Crystal and them at, at play is because South Africa we've got so very distinct prop, uh, challenges in, in, in South Africa and Africa. Entrepreneurs, tech entrepreneurs in South Africa really need to think outside the box to come up with really awesome solutions. And very often, once we've developed solutions that South Africans actually purchase and work in a South African context, by the time we take it to Europe and the US, people actually like our products because it's it's, it's, it's really funky ways of solving problems which people sometimes in Europe and the US that's got first world problems don't really come up with these solutions because they're never confronted with the challenges we are. So by the time we develop products that, 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 that look after the challenges and we take it overseas, people actually like what we do. Um, but yeah, that's basically what funding would do. It would help it to scale on a regional and global level. I love that. Okay, and with that, let's con continue on with Jane's conversation with you. We'll touch on this a little bit later if um, people have questions on that. It is, um, you know, the product and the service offering is amazing. So, yeah, I think it would be great to be able to have that opportunity. Um, Elman, I'm just wondering, I know that you're saying people are interested at this time, and I know for myself in speaking to different clients who are now working from home, they're saying one of the challenges is how do I now communicate with people? People are not necessarily used to working remotely. And as you say, they can maybe communicate, but they're not necessarily engaging people. So we've come into this unexpected scenario of our COVID-19 pandemic. And... Um, yeah, so I'm just wondering whether you have any views on how your product and your service offering adds value at, at a time like this specifically. Yeah, um, yeah, Jay, thank you so, so much for that question. I think um, I'm going to take a step back and, 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 and I really value to guys focus on my, on, 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 my, on my product so much, but I think let, let's focus on the client needs out there. So, what are the needs out there that this this tries to do? So my wife currently works at Red Bull. Um, all of the employees work from home. They actually started two weeks before us. So Red Bull Global had a lockdown even before South African lockdown, and it's going to last until the end of April. So they had two months where they had to work from home. Um, I had a conversation with uh, head of HR of Nike South Africa um, yesterday regarding their things. And, and the issue what's currently happening: big companies they have now quickly invested in Microsoft Teams um, or Zoom or some sort of communication case and software. So what is happening is on a weekly or daily basis, you'll have teams. Um, so the team with the line manager, let's say the head of sales, he sits in front of their computer and then there's people logging all over South Africa and, and they have a communication. I mean, you see all these funny clips about all the meetings that people have on Zoom with 20 to 30 people on it and, and smiling faces and stuff. Now, th those tools are great at communicating. So I've got an opinion, you've got an opinion, we, 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 we talk to one another. But the issue is because, like now, for this webinar, we log in for a specific purpose, and when, once a purpose is done, you log off again. That people interaction, that emotional interaction that you had at the office, where you both go to the, to the, to the kitchen to have some coffee, where you just chat about 
random things, get to know one another, just be friendly. Um, because you're in the office and you see other people, that emotional connection with the company is growing. Um, so it's, let's be honest, it's the people side. The, 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 the communication tools can be happen like Zoom does not really cater for the people side of the engagement. So that is the big need that clients are seeing today, saying, if my employee is working remotely, um, there's a couple of things. First, I need to engage with them. I need to get communication op open to them. I can't just let, the, let um, have a quick meeting in Teams and within a couple of hours, everybody knows about a new policy. Um, um, it, it, it's, it's engagement, getting getting engagement out there. So that's the first need. The second need is, is the emotional part. How can I keep my teams motivated? Um, line managers, the Nike SA's HR director yesterday, especially said a line manager coming to and say, listen, yeah, we've had funny hat meetings now. We had um, um, brunch meetings where everybody drinks a, 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 a coffee and a weird mug. We had dinner meetings where we're drinking wine all together over it. we've done everything but i can't keep my, my my team motivated i can't keep them engaged it's becoming quite difficult so that emotional connection um is also is also important um i think in general the the, the third most important thing and this is before COVID 19 why our products were such so popular is hr is looking at ways to convert boring hr processes in ways that candidates and, and, and employees want to engage with. Like if you look at the, the, the normal recruitment process, so um, if, if, if the recruiters log in, or let's say HR people also log in, listen to this, from a recruitment process, whether you work for ShopRite or for Woolworths or for Nike SA, the recruitment process is roughly the same. We, we, we send out some form of communication into the market in the form of a job advert. People then respond. That normally goes to applicant tracking system that gets you get auto respond emails from that then you go into a a face-to-face a -face interview into a panel interview so, so the process is the same and it's very often quite boring um it, it people know what they expect there's nothing spectacular and engaging that keeps the candidate engaged well with game based or gamify if you gamify gamify that process a bit you can actually throw some interactions in with the the candidate that would make the Canada experience so memorable that they would walk away after being at your company and remember that experience, remember the emotions that, that, that they felt while they went through that experience. And that is gonna let you stand out as, as, a, as, a, as a possible employer. The same thing with employees. If you take the onboarding process, which we're gonna show you, and, 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 and you just do something different that really engage people's hearts with their minds. Um, the new employee is going to already from the first day, even before they start, they're going to feel there's no bias remorse. They're going to say, wow, yes, I, I made a good choice here. Leaving my old employer for the new employer, yes, I, I made a great choice. The emotional connection with the new employer will develop from the start and that will improve retention and productivity. But let's say anything about employee engagement, you want your employees to be engaged because studies have shown the more engaged they are, the more productive they are. So in, in natural, I've got a couple of other 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 things here, but for for, for the sake of, of of this conversation, I think that, that is the most pertinent needs that that our product address um, um, through this process. Engaged employees are the more productive employees, and we know from all the studies and Gallup surveys that an emotional connection is your most surefire way of getting somebody engaged and getting somebody loyal, whether they're internal or external. So I like what you're saying about creating that emotional connection and how important that is. And I think I'm also hearing that in the marketplace where people are, they're struggling to connect, they're struggling to communicate. And part of it, I suppose, is just everybody adjusting to their new normal. So it sounds, you know, it sounds like a wonderful, simple solution. So I think I want to ask you two things is, Please, can you show us a little bit more about what it looks like? And then I also want to know your view on why people are struggling to take this on, or what do you think the obstacles or challenges are for people to not just say, oh, this is amazing, this is our solution, let's just you know, implement this. 
So I don't know what you'd rather do first. Either, you know, show us a little bit of, of, of what it actually looks like so we can get that picture or tell us, you know, what, what obstacles or challenges people are coming up with. Yeah, I think, let me, I've got a, I've got a couple of demos here to show the application in different solutions. So maybe let me yeah. show one or two and then after I'll, I'll tell you what the challenges that we experience and then after we can maybe, maybe jump into another one. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to show just a, an example of a onboarding process that you could that you could um, 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 gamify in this way. Um, I'm going to share my screen now, but before we start, I just want to, from a technical point of view, people um, I'm listening in, there are two ways in which you can execute virtual environments. The one is called CGI, it's called computer generated imaging. That is where you physically create through a computer a environment. So, so think of animation stuff like Toy Story or Shrek. Um, so it is a, a, a computer generated environment, it's not real life. The other one is where you take 360 images or 360 videos of uh, actual environment or the client's offices and you use that as a background for that. So I'm going to demo both today, but the one I'm going to show you now is of a client's actual environment. So, the, so what we do, we physically go into the offices take these, these images with a specialized 360 camera. Uh, it's the same thing that they use for Google Maps, for Google Earth, and that type of cameras. We go in and we take it. So here's an example of one that we've created. Oh, snap. Sorry about that. Let me share my screen. It would work if I share my screen and everybody can see it. Um, so let me do it like get my, my entire screen share. Let me just check with you. Um, it's loading. So, Almond, maybe while it's loading, you can uh, tell can us some of the challenges. Jane, that people Jennifer, have. can you yeah. see my screen here? Yeah, I know. Just something. We, we can't actually see it. It's just blurry. I mean, this is, um, we're not phased, though, because we're all getting used to remote work. Right. And so I we, think while it's loading, So, so while it's loading, you can tell us some of the yeah, challenges it, that you think people are coming up with. A bit. Let me try this again. Um, okay, so the challenges, the challenges. Yes. Um, so uh, starting off with. Oh goodness! It oh, seems oh, like the <laughs> the bug has got you again. <laughs> this is the reality of uh, remote. Uh, we don't. We you can't always trust the internet to be stable. But I have to say, it's much better than last week, right? So we're just going to wait for Almond to reconnect. And while we wait for Almond to reconnect, um, ah, hello Vanessa. Hello, hello to LZ. It's great to see all of you here. We lost Almond for a little bit. We expecting him to come back any moment now and then he's going to demo us some of his uh, CGI environments. We're very mm. excited to see it. Um, I remember when uh, I first met Alman and we had a cup of coffee, we finally sat down and he showed me this environment of his and I was mind blown because it is just beautiful. It's, it's a fantastic um, uh, space. And I definitely see um, it happening quite a lot uh, in future where people who have remote head office or virtual head office uh, will have a, a CGI gamification in terms of their assessments. You can learn a lot with uh, about people with the way they play games and who will also uh, be, have these virtual environments, these 360 degree environments for onboarding. Mm. I think it saves a lot of time. What do you think, Jane? Yeah, I'm just quickly messaging Elman to say maybe he should share the link with you to open. But yeah, I think so. I think the thing that I'm hearing at the moment from a lot of clients is that they don't um, have the capacity to be able to facilitate onboarding or to be able to communicate policies and processes or update people um, on company information, um, especially working remotely. And even when they're not working remotely, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of manpower. And so I think they are looking for ways to be able to implement something like this 
But I do see a fear around, hmm, how much is tech going to do? And how much does that take away from the human interaction? You know, I think people mm -hmm. are afraid of losing that human engagement. But I don't think it has to be one or the other. Mm. So, for example, from a talent acquisition perspective, I think if somebody is going through a talent acquisition process and part of it is the gamification or part of it is on the tech side, it allows more time and space to engage more meaningfully in person when they are meeting with the, the decision makers and the, and the relevant stakeholders than everybody in the process just getting a tiny little bit of interaction. Mm -hmm. So I think there's there's potential to make the whole process more meaningful. And as Elman was saying, there's potential to be able to expand and increase that candidate experience, which we know is so important. Um, mm -hmm. I know, I mean, I see um, Vanessa here. Oh, I see Celeste here too. Hello, Vanessa and Celeste. So they will um, they'll be able to testify to you know what McKinsey coined in 2001 around the war for talent, and um, the candidates having won that. And I know Vanessa often talks about talent attraction now being more the focus than um, being able to, you know, necessarily source source people, especially through, you know, advertising. I mean, you know, we're past that in a lot of ways, except for certain bulk recruitment, etc. But I think because of that, there really is a war for companies to stand out and to make their experience better than the next one. So as Alman was saying, it is so important for a candidate to be able to go into an organization, experience that process, because four out of five candidates will judge that company's, can, um, that company's culture based on their experience with the person who's interviewing them and with all the touch points in their talent acquisition process. Most mm. of them, if it's negative, they won't come back. Mm. But you've got to be able to provide an experience where candidates will leave and say, even if I didn't get the job, I'm telling people about that company because it was so impressive. It was so personal. It was so forward thinking. Um, I love the tech side, especially if we're going to speak to our millennials and Gen Zs. So I think that is such an important part to include in the process if you do want to stand out as, an, as a potential employer or an employer of choice, uh, which I know is Celeste's favorite topic. Welcome back, mm -hmm. Elman. Yeah, sorry, I didn't see your WhatsApp, so I was talking on and on and on and on. <laughs> no problem. Um, well, Maybe I, you I, can I just... basically solved everybody's problems. While I was away, I solved everyone's problems. It's a pity you guys can hear me, yeah? <laughs> well, maybe if you want to, you can just move on to telling us what you find the challenges and the obstacles are for people who want to implement these solutions, because they sound like solutions that really add value. And be able, you know, able to increase their 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 candidate expand their, their candidate experience, improve that. So, why are people not buying into this quickly or already, or especially now? What's holding them back? Yes, okay, and I think that after we can go into the demos. Um, so, so, I think that there's a couple of things. The first main thing often is the the lack of te technical expertise. I mean, most of us, even me, uh, I studied a BA. So people that come into HR, HR leadership normally started a BCom or a BA um, and doesn't come from the technical background. So the moment you start talking about front ends and back ends and databases and CGI and avatars and APIs and integration and those type of things, because it seems so technical, it's because it seems so difficult, people start saying, okay, whoa, 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 maybe, maybe we should get IT involved or maybe this is something I don't understand. So often that is that is a some trouble. The other big one is that we found is building a business case. So often HR sees that this is going to change their life. They're going to see the value that's going to add for the employee. They'll see the value that's going to add for the um, um, employer brand. But when they need to build a business case to get the budget, they're not that verse in, in creating the ROI. Because can, let's say, for example, they are spending X amount on onboarding. But when they want to go to their boss or the FD or something, say, hey, I want to just next year, I don't want to spend this on a normal process. I want to spend something on new new things. But then business or, or sometimes ask them, okay, well, build me a business case. What is the ROI going to be and why do we need to do something new? It's often at that point that they struggle. 
technically speaking, we've become quite good at helping HR to do that. So I don't think that's a challenge anymore, but sometimes people do struggle to convince business. Um, and I think lastly, it's just sometimes the, um, pe the, the, the fear of change. Um, people have been doing onboarding for 20 years the same way, or the recruitment process has been like this for the past 15 years, or they would say, since I've been here, this is how we deal with things. And, and, and although the new way might be new, it might be exciting, might add value, it's human for us to sometimes just be a change and say, well, how is this not going to change? If we, we move to tech, it's going to take the, is it going to take the people interaction totally away? What is going to happen? But it's, it's just a fear of change. So I think that's the three, three reasons why mm -hmm. people sometimes haven't implemented this work. No, absolutely. I think that fear of change is so real. And I see Celeste echoing that in our chat box. So we are creatures of habit and change is hard in any scenario. And, you know, it's not new news, but I think one of the one of the things that people are saying about our current pandemic is it is forcing people into a situation where they have to change. We don't have a choice anymore. It is business as unusual, not as usual, but how do we how do we navigate this? How do we adjust? And nobody has a choice. And I think another thing that people are saying, again, which is not new news, is that after the lockdowns have ended and we all go back into the workplace, it's not necessarily going to go back to as it was before. This isn't a new normal and we're going to go back to normal. So what are your views on how things will change when we're trying to integrate back into the work style or workplace as we knew it? What is your view about what's going to? What's your view about what's going to be different? Um, okay, so I, I think firstly, rem, remote work is going to become more acceptable in the South African context. If, if you if you follow employment trends in 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 in, in Europe. Australia and especially the US, people have been moving towards the gig economy, moving towards independent contractors. So um, there was a study, I think it was last year, that came out that that non-firm staff uh, um, was almost 50% of the US population or working population last year. So half of the US population are not people that come to the office from nine to five that work a specific job with a specific job description. So there they, they were already more used to remote work. While in South Africa, proper gig economy. It's probably only Uber that, that, that in South Africa really does that. The rest is still shift work or nine to five. You go to your A venue and, and you work from there. And although people have been speaking about the benefits of remote working, um, on employee engagement, on productivity, South African companies haven't really tried it. Because you need to you need to trial it first. You need to see what is going to work in your context. Because working from home is different once again for a a manufacturing environment and a contact center than it is for retail or head office. So you need to find your way. And people in South Africa has been postponing it. While I think what happened now is that experiment of remote workers have been forced on them. So I think they've learned now what is working and what is not working. So Offering remote work for people that can work remotely is going to become more prevalent. So I think that is the that is the first one. The second thing is going to happen is South Africa companies have been caught a bit off guard by by not having the technology to deal with remote working or people working from home. They simply didn't. So another change is going to be I see IT departments, finance departments, HR departments, everybody in the next financial year is going to spend considerably more money on empowering themselves on getting technology that engage and work with remote workers and they did than they did previously. Um, yeah, I would think that's that's the two main changes that is going to stay after the lockdown has passed. Very much agree with you. And and currently I see the specifically the IT departments and the HR people um, across industries are the people who are working kind of 24-7 at the moment trying to quickly implement and set up what is needed for people to be able to function when they're working from home and hopefully it'll be a little bit easier once people's kids have gone back to school because at the moment they're trying to multitask and working <laughs> and educating their kids and i know we've done a couple of webinars on that but i agree with you i think that um you know overseas they have set that precedent i mean we've been training coaches globally over the past four years 
And so for us, we had a, a workshop this morning, which was so exciting to engage with people. But um, in our workshop this morning, everybody was working from home. But it wasn't unusual because for the past four years, as we've been training these people in Europe and in the US, they've been working from home. So some are in the office, but it's not unusual. They're very used to working from a home place and they're comfortable and it's all set up. So I agree with you. I think we're going to have to move towards that. But Alman, what would the, I see, you know, we're going to have to end off soon and allow a little bit of time for some Q&A. But for people who are out there and listening either right now, who are going to be listening to the recording and they're thinking, yeah, you know, we really need to start investing. But where do we begin? I mean, you told us once about that one client you went to see who's got like 20 different systems that they've started. And, you know, now how do they integrate them? How do they get them to talk to each other? Where do people start? If they want to, if they want to start putting into putting putting these types of um, of solutions into place. Yeah, no, um, thank you so, for that question, Jan. Because on on, on Google People Analytics, that's what I deal with on a daily basis. So what what often happens, um, like what happened now with with COVID nineteen, is HR because once again they're not a, they're not the IT department. Yeah, so. I come from HR and I've done the same, I made the same mistakes. So I'm not pointing fingers. Actually, the, the biggest thing is to me because I've done the same problem. But because we don't come from a tech background, we don't understand that we need to do um, um, a HR tech strategy and a HR data or a data strategy. So when we, we purchase software, we need to think, it's almost like Lego blocks. How, how are, are all these software going to fit with one another? How is the data going to flow between the systems and from the systems? We never thought of that about that. So what ha often happened in the past is we've got a need for something. We identify a need, whether it's a training training software. We go out, we buy LMS, we just implement it. Now the LMS is there and people use that normally as a standalone. Then um, three years later, let's say, and this will, this will happen in MTM. So it's a case study. They fixed it, but it happened there. But then two years later, the sales director comes and says, guys, we've been using your LMS. But Holman is frozen for me. I don't know if he's frozen for everyone else. Still frozen for me. Jen, is he frozen for you? Uh, yes, he's frozen for me too. So okay. I'm um, sure let's he'll give come him back a moment to reload. Can, can reload. But I, um, I do I do think there are some HR people who are thinking ahead. You know, there's a, um, a friend of ours who works for one of the top uh, financial services companies. And he said even from the first week where they were all working from home, now he is, you know, more in, in the IT space. But the mm -hmm. HR person was already asking them, what is your productivity like? How are you finding it working from home? Um, mm -hmm. Do you think you can be more productive working from home? Um, what do you think about this way of working when, you know, kind of lockdown is over? So I do like, um, I do hear you, Ryan, and I agree. I think there, there is, there has been a culture of micromanagement, but it is refreshing to hear the stories of people who, yeah, who are thinking ahead and who are thinking, you know, Phew, perhaps this could work in the future. I know there was another, um, another client, um, an HR friend who was working for one of the, yeah, you know, again, an IT company. But during one of our load shedding stints, they all had to go and work from home for a full week. And what they did is they tracked people's productivity over that time. And when everyone came back to work, they realized that they'd actually increased in productivity with everybody working from home. Now, granted, of course, they were all more set up to do that and, you know, more more used to working remotely, you know, being in IT and IT solutions. But so what they did is when they came back, they said, okay, now we're all back. You know, we don't have any more load shedding at that stage. But from now on, all of you have to work from home every Wednesday. It's compulsory. And so they, they've actually integrated that into part of their, their business as usual now, is that people have to work from home on a Wednesday. So I do think that that kind of culture will be embedded and that that kind of culture will be integrated into companies as we move forward. And hopefully, you know, those HR people who are thinking ahead are already preparing for that. 
So Alvin, welcome back. Speaking of technology, and <laughs> you were busy telling us about, <laughs> about how people can set up um, to be able to move forward in the space and MTN is the case study. Yeah, so lastly, just your HR data. So when, when you start off, you need to plan up front what are you going to do with the HR data and how it's going to flow. Once you've done that, and Koga People Analytics can help you to develop a strategy in the data strategy, but once you've done that, then only you go to vendors. Then you go and speak with vendors to see what are their capabilities and will that fall in, put into your tech strategy and your data strategy. Um, but very often people do the other way around. They go first, buy all, all the software, implement it, and then they say, oh, hell, how are we going to get these things to talk to one another? How are we going to get the data to flow? Like anything, do the strategy first and the planning first, then you know what you need, and then you go out, and then you go purchase. purchase mm. it. So that, that's what I would start. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when I've heard you speak on this topic before and in the training that we did, I remember you telling um, that clients in the oil industry saying, you know, don't try and implement everything all at once. Just do it in bite-sized chunks. You know, identify it, break it down, you know, put something into, you know, implement something, see how that's working, then add something else. Um, but it doesn't have to be super expensive and, you know, a big once-off event. So I think that's, yeah, that, that gives a bit of encouragement to people who are, okay, as you no. say, a little bit nervous of this, especially if they're not technically astute. So... Um, Alman, I don't know if you're ready to share your screen. I'm a little bit nervous that if you share it, you're going to disappear again. <laughs> so I, I've, I've been ready. I've been ready. <laughs> Has the bandwidth been ready? That's the, that's the main thing. Well, maybe that's before you show us, let's just see. Are there any questions that anyone has in case we do um, we do lose Alman? Um, yes, Brian, I love do. your point about both sides needing to come to the party. I think that's a great point. Let people prove it. Mm -hmm. Um and and also there's a question for Alman that say, that's from Kelly who says, which type of businesses are able to employ this kind of technology? Is it ideally for big corporates or is it scalable for SMEs too? Lovely question, Kelly. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, no, this is, this is all over. Um, uh, once I show you some of our solutions, um, we've got SMEs that's, that's, that's implementing these. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Just so we got to implement it, implement this. So I think um, that's what I like about a lot of South African companies that, I, that, that I'm currently dealing with on the African tracking system, on video interviewing, and everything is because we we're developing the tech over here. It is it is cost effective. Um, you don't need to be a large corporate to um, to invest in in something in something like this. Especially some of the things that we that we've done here, um, it's very flexible. Um, and then, yeah, no, it, it's for, for SMEs. Um, okay, so let me just qualify this, right? Um, so we talk about SMEs. A, a virtual engagement scenario, companies have that type of problem only when they've got some sizable numbers. I mean, when you're a micro enterprise with five employees, yeah. You don't need to, to invest in a virtual onboarding. You, you, you probably onboard one person a year. So to, 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 to invest in something for one person a year, it, it, it won't make sense. But there are some point that at the SME, I would say people with 50, 60 age plus, they're probably onboarding people once a month at least. Those are the type of people that, that essentially would buy it. That and up. But they're definitely of micro enterprises, but yeah, SMEs and up, it's fine. Nice to hear. Thanks, Kelly. Okay, do you want me to start sharing, right? Yeah. Yes, can, you, can you see this? Yeah. Yeah. We can okay, see so, it. Okay, so yes, example of a a a onboarding process. Um, as you can see, there's a client for which we we demoed this for. We're in the process of building this thing. This is an example of what I said is, is the live imaging. So we go to our office space and we physically take images like this of the office. So the great thing from the onboarding process is if you send this to a new starter, even before they start, essentially they can take a physical tour through your entire office space from home. So by the time they get to the office for their first day, 
the office isn't strange anymore. They know how the reception looks like. They even know how to get to their office. They know how their department looks like. They know the canteen. They can, you can even show them where they park, where they need to park. You can have an entire tour like that. It's all built on physical, actual um, 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 yeah, um, uh, images of your actual office. There are also two ways. This is just a, the static way. I'll show you the other one where we've put in some more interactive ways. So once again, to, to, for, for Kelly's question, this is a type of solution that, can, that you can roll out very really cost effectively. But let's do some interactions over here. Let's hope you guys can get this. I'm going to press on the sound button. Hi, welcome to Wellington. This is a demonstration of a typical onboarding process for an employee. Uh, I hope you guys. Hi, welcome to Wellington. This is a demonstration of a typical onboarding process for an employee. I hope you guys heard that. Um, that was just the voiceover in here. For example, what you what you can do over here is you can have a welcome video from the CEO. So when they click on it, it will open up an actual video. This one pulls through from YouTube now, so you can see it, it is embedded. You can embed YouTube in here, but you can embed a, a standalone video that doesn't pull from the internet from here. Who would have guessed an apprentice would become president? Who could have seen a European breakup drama? Who can predict which too big to collapse? Um, so this is just an example. You can put any video in there, but how great would it be if you, if you start off and the see, I would say, um, oh, welcome to Momentum. We are so happy to have you as part of, part of our business. Um, our business is all about people. And he starts sharing or she starts sharing about the values of the company and everything. Um, which which, which it will allow the new employee to engage with the CEO directly, know who the CEO, CEO is, and, and, and engage from there. Um, let's move around um, over here. So here's the great thing that people love about the onboarding process. One big part about onboarding is the administration thereof. So people need to choose the employee benefits. There's two things I I applicable here. Firstly, they need to know what the benefits are. So if it's a provident fund or medical aid, they need to know what the medical aid options are, what the provident fund options are. So they need to be educated regarding that. And then secondly, they need to fill in the administration form. Well, this engage in, in, in the total virtual engagement, we can handle both the education and the administration. So as you can see, yeah, yes, a video, if you click on that, then a video would open up that will, will explain to the um, um, employee what benefits are there. So let's on the problem fund, let's say there's three options, aggressive, a moderate or conservative fund with conservative growth. Um, okay, sorry, I've seen. Okay. Um, then, over here, at the Providence fund, it will open up something where they can fill in the form. I'm not Got to present it because proprietary knowledge for momentum, but this takes them into the employee self service system. So once somebody clicks over here, they can indicate what problem fund they want, they can um, add the next of kin details, um, and they can fill in the entire form. So once somebody is done in this room, they know what the, the, the problem fund is going to be, they filled in the problem fund form, it takes away paperwork complete. There's no paperwork that somebody needs to fill in. That needs to go to HR and HR needs to capture it. Once they're done here, yeah, it's it, it's with API, it's linked up with the system. So then administration is done for the provident fund. They can go back and do the same thing for the medical aid. And then if you've got any videos for orientation, let's say people need to know what the health and safety policy is, then you can create anything um, like this where people can watch a health and safety video or any other the policy and just see what it is it. Okay. safety it can be easier than you think i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go through through this so okay um are there any questions or things you want to want to add jennifer jane um from the chat box from anybody who's who's with us Say that again. Oh, no, I was just seeing if there were any questions on the side. I don't have any questions. I love it. 
Um, and I think, um, you know, just recently I was speaking to somebody who said, sure, you know, she doesn't know how she's going to find the capacity to onboard new people at the moment. And I was speaking to her about this and saying, you know, why doesn't she look into this? Because, you know, and, and they can, it's so much more real with the, you know, CGI and with the, you know, virtual reality experience. It's so different to something that's just 2D um, or text-based. So I think that's what, as you say, makes it attractive and adds to the candidate experience instead of making it feel monotonous. Okay, I'm going through, you know, pages and pages now. So I love the idea of visiting different rooms and the fact that it's integrated with the whole system so that you're not duplicating and wasting time like that. Hmm. You know. something cool. I do want to show you something cool quickly that we've created for, for Nike in 24 hours. It's a demo, but it's very, very applicable to COVID-19. Is that going to be okay? Yeah. Jen, you okay. fine, yeah? Um, we have a couple of minutes left. I'm going to quickly go through this. There we go. So, okay. So, in, in current, this is, Nike is looking for something that they engage the employees with. There's an employee engagement one. Uh, it will tell you exactly how it works. This is a picture of the Nike SA, of the Nike international offices in the US. Um, we got an image online. Um, so, it is actual office of the people that are so that looks like. But what we've done with plug and play, we just took images that we had. As you can see, it's the same office space we use for momentum, yeah? So this makes it plug and play. But yeah, you can have a coronavirus update. So if people want to know what's happening, there's a link here that can take it to your coronavirus update. In here, if there's any updates that they want on the office, there's some information I could share over here about new developments at Nike, maybe uh, announces on the leaf policy. They're going to put a weekly, we're going to change this video over here. There's going to be a message from the CEO on a weekly basis and motivating the employees. And then lastly, we're creating some games for them to play over here where um, the game for the week, for instance, is going to be Emoji Charade. They're going to play over here. And then, uh, yes, how it's going to work. And at the end, they're going to go to a leaderboard room and then whoever won last week is going to show it. So what we took, we took it and because it's plug and play, we, we took images and we developed this within within 24 hours. But it is built for employee engagement under under COVID. So what's going to happen? Everybody in, in Nike is going to come here on a daily basis, check if there's new new messages over here. They're going to play the game, um, check videos from the from the CEO, and this is a way for the entire company to engage, to feel part, um, and to and to get information without making a chance sound boring hmm. okay. there we love go. it and that it allows for people to do it in their own space pace time um so i think that just takes away the challenges of people having demands at home and you know missing meetings or not being engaged during a meeting so i love that awesome so jen anything from your side any questions or things you want to add well, uh, you know, to, to me, something like this, I look at it and I think to myself, you know, a, 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 a potential candidate will walk in there, they will click through and get all the information that they need without having to ask these questions, either of HR, the hiring manager, the recruiter, and I feel that this value for money will become this. What we're seeing here is a little slice of the future that we're bringing to you today. This is going to be the norm. There is no doubt in my mind about this at all. And to me, it's an exciting thing. I'm glad that we could see this in the beginning, uh, Alman. I think we get, we're in for a wonderful ride with your company with 30 Degree Tech. And it's only uh, you or you have a co-founder, right? Yeah, so um, my background, I, because I'm from HR, so if, if you guys think that somehow I built all these fancy things, unfortunately, I'm not that talented. So, um, but y y Yakin Sadek is my, is my partner. He's the guy that makes the magic. So how we work together is I would sit down with a client because I'm from HR, I understand the processes and I understand the messages I want to put through. Then I go back, I speak with Yakin, and I said, okay, well, this is the purpose. He then becomes very creative and comes up with things, starts building it. We take it to the client and, and then that's a normal software development process from the sprints and scrums and then 
at the end until we develop it. But the great thing is here, we can build something very bespoke on, on, on client images that makes it very nice for them and can be a big. But in this case where you want something urgently, Nike wants to something that they want to communicate to your people now. Within 24 hours, we could build something for them. It's quite cheap and they can roll out quite quickly. And that flexibility is sometimes what client what is also looking for. They don't want just this, this big, enormous machine of a solution that takes months to build. And once it's built, it can't be changed or it can be changed, but with cost and difficult, we can quickly change into actions and make it quite flexible for any company. Hmm. And um, one last thing, uh, Jane told me that you have a little gift for our live attendees today. Would you mind telling us just a little bit more about that, please? Yeah, so so anybody that's, that's live, but live today, um, Jane and Jennifer is going to gonna, gonna pick the lucky winner. And then I'll be in contact and then you can either choose um, a free license in some of our HR, one of our HR chatbots for a month or two, or we can give you a significant discount on one of the virtual environments. So if you want something for your company, um, you can make contact with us and we can build something for you with a significant discount. Excellent. Thanks, Alman. That's very generous of you. Yes, thank you so, so in much. The, in the spirit of COVID, where everybody is just yeah, trying to help one another, support one another, um, and see how we can all move forward. Thank you. So thanks so much for your time, Elman. We really appreciate you taking the time out to share your knowledge, your expertise, your vision of the future. Um, I know Jen is a futurist at heart, so she's always looking at the future and where it's going and what it's going to hold. So, um, yes, yeah, so I know that's that's also very exciting for her and for I to hear more about. So thank you. And yes, so people will be able to get in contact with you if they're interested or if they want to refer people. Um, and yeah, we look forward to people being able to come away with a little something as well, whether they're their lucky winner of the discount or um, of the chatbot. So, yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course, we're going to be, uh, we've got a live recording of this. It'll go onto our uh, Touchbase YouTube page and a link, of course, on our Touchbase Facebook page as well. Please keep an eye on there to hear who the lucky winner was. And of course, if we've got any further information, we can continue the conversation there. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. It was exciting. I loved it. And I will see you again in two weeks' time. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Bye, Elman. Bye, Jane. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. We'll see you next time.